And Martin, thank you for the challenge that you have put forth. It is my honor also to be here with some of the leadership of the House. The leader of the Congressional Black Caucus made for us working with Eric Holder and, and uh, John Sarbanes and others, to, and Mr. Clyburn, to make sure this legislation, the Freedom to Vote Act, was passed. And Terry Sewell has been the author of the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, even before it was called that. She's been for it for years and advocating relentlessly, and you will hear from them. Let me just say that to what the uh, family had to say about the history and the prospects, let us just say amen. And Congress would say I associate myself with remarks. But I just want to add this. Because I was always watching the King family from school and all the rest. In fact, I was at the march. I couldn't stay to hear the speech, can you imagine? Because I had to leave to go get married. <laughs> That's why I can always remember how long ago this speech was, or how long ago I've, I've been married. <laughs> how long I've been there. But in any event, Dr. King, Kurt Scott King, and those who were associated with him, including our beloved John Lewis, they believed in nonviolence. They traveled, the kings, to India to study the Mahatma Gandhi principle of nonviolence. The word for nonviolence in Sanskrit, Satyagraha, has two meanings. One is nonviolence, the other is insistence on the truth. And that's the message they shared with them, brought back, and the rest. And we are insisting on the truth. The truth is that what is happening in the Congress, and I give great credit uh, to the Democratic leader, Chuck Schumer, for his relentless and persistence in trying to get this done, and to the president for his leadership. But we have to get this done. And the truth is that our colleagues, House and Senate, Democrats and Republicans, must weigh the equities here. Well, it may be true to them that the filibuster is an important custom. It is not the Constitution of the United States, the truth is. And the truth is that the Constitution says only if you're ratifying a treaty, convicting an impeached person, or ratifying the Constitution, a simple majority. That's why the Vice President can break a tie, 50-50. So the truth, we want all of them in the Senate to weigh the equities. We all want bipartisanship. We all strive for it. We have a responsibility to do so. But when we cannot have it, we cannot confine our democracy to what might be bipartisanly possible. So I ask our colleagues in the Senate, respectfully, for what they think the filibuster means, to compare that, to weigh the equities against our democracy, because nothing less is at stake than our democracy. This is about suppressing the vote. It's about nullifying the elections, which Dr. King talked about that day. Nullifying the election. It's about uh, just doing so many things to be obstacles to participation. That's wrong. The truth is, that's wrong. And this family, and John Lewis, and so beautifully that this bill is named for him, but the first bill, he wrote the first 300 pages of what is now called a freedom to vote. And as has been indicated by the King family, these, this bill is supported by all of the Democrats, House and Senate. It's just the filibuster in a way. So in a way, if you really truly want to honor Dr. King. Don't dishonor him by using a congressional custom as an excuse for protecting our democracy. We have no right to honor this family, to visit the monument. Imagine 30, somewhat 36 years old, left this earth in such a way that he has a monument on the mall along with Abraham Lincoln. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, all of them with tears in their eyes for the departure from our democracy 
that is happening right now, unless the truth is acknowledged and this legislation is passed. And with that, I want to yield to our distinct, am I introducing? Mm -hmm. Our distinguished uh, chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. Working with her has been a joy because she has been so persistent. She brings her own record of civil rights experience to, this, to the Congress and to this subject, as does our distinguished with Mr. Clyburn. Uh, without her leadership and her persistence, we would not have passed that first bill for the People Act, which is now called Freedom to Vote. It was an honor to serve with her as well as with Terry Sewell. Uh, we are just so determined uh, to make this happen tomorrow, and no one more determined than the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, Joyce Beatty of, ba of Ohio. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker, and thank you for your leadership. It is an honor for me to be here today and for me to be the chairwoman of the powerful Congressional Black Caucus. To the King family, thank you, Mark, Andrea, Yolanda, for the peace walk that we just did, for keeping the dream alive and for deliver for voting rights. To you, I say thank you. But today we come to seize the opportunities for justice that lay before us now. Because we cannot redeem the soul of America without the courage to fight the barriers of cultural, systemic, environmental racism. And at every turn, we must remind America that we have the right now the right for education, the right for childcare, housing, economic and social justice. But what? It is all born out of the right to vote. That is why I have dedicated my life to connecting people, public policy and politics, fighting for justice and civil rights for all. That is why I marched with this family. That is why I say thank you for giving us, Yolanda, and your voice that represents our future. The late John Lewis. for the 50th anniversary of Bloody Sunday. That is why I was arrested recently in the United States Senate for demanding the protection for our voting rights. I stand on Fannie Lou Hamer's shoulders. I stand on the shoulders of Shirley Chisholm, Coretta Scott King, Rosa Parks, Parks and Dorothy Hyde and Yolanda, you and my two grandchildren, Leah and Spencer, the new generation, and you're doing it your way. But let me say to you, you stand on our foundation. Together, we must tear down the walls of injustice against voting rights and insist that the Senate pass the Freedom to Vote John R. Lewis Voting Rights Act because silence is not an option. The Congressional Black Caucus has called for the vote, demanding the Senate to take immediate action on voting rights legislation. We will not yield our efforts to enshrine voting rights legislation into law, nor will we allow a filibuster to filibuster away our democracy and our voting rights. Today we are speaking to a pained and frustrated nation, but tomorrow and the days to come, we will witness the Senate do its job to call for the vote. But let me say this loudly and clearly, 
We must draw the line in the sand of justice for any member not standing with us on voting rights. They are obstructionists to the America's promise of freedom and justice, and we must stand against them. The nation must join us and make some noise. Your father and grandfather said, lightning makes no noise, no sound until it strikes. Well, America, today let's make some noise. To this nation, let's stand up and strike back, fight back, fight for our voting rights. Lastly, the Congressional Black Caucus, the conscience of the Congress. I promise you that we stand with you. We stand with your father's dream. We stand with your courageous leadership, Speaker Pelosi, because you did your job. And I want the nation to know the House passed the Voting Rights Act. And so now, America, that's our power, that's our message from the Congressional Black Caucus. And in case you didn't know, I'm Congresswoman Joyce Beatty, and I approve this message. God bless you. And, and now it gives me great honor and distinction to introduce a person who needs no introduction. I call her the mother of Alabama. She is one who has led us with the late John Lewis across that Edmund Pettus Bridge. She is an author of voting rights, and it is my privilege to call her a friend, a proud member of the Congressional Black Caucus, a leader, the Honorable Congresswoman Terry Sewell. I'm Congresswoman Terry Sewell, and I proudly represent Alabama's 7th Congressional District. It includes the historic cities of Birmingham, Montgomery, and yes, my hometown of Selma, Alabama. You see, voting rights is very personal to me. So many senators, so many legislators, and the King family join us year after year to walk across that bridge to commemorate what happened there on Bloody Sunday and to say, no more, no more. We are once again at that precipice, an inflection point, if you will. While we no longer have to count how many marbles are in a jar or recite backwards the Declaration of Independence, today's modern day voting suppression is no less pernicious. Long lines purging of roles, the list goes on and on. But today, as we honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his legacy, it can't be a celebration, as Yolanda said, because we need legislation. We need the Senate to do its job. Almost six decades ago, John Lewis and the foot soldiers of the Civil Rights Movement marched, fought, and yes, bled on a bridge for the equal right of all Americans to vote. Their efforts culminated in the passage of the 1965 Voting Rights Act. And voting rights was never partisan until recently. The Voting Rights Bill passed five times for reauthorization under four Republican presidents, but now, we're having a problem, a problem called the filibuster. I agree with my colleagues. I agree with the King family. We cannot let a process stand in the way. A process, oh, by the way, that over 150 times have been set aside, and most recently by the raising of the debt ceiling. If we can raise the debt ceiling to protect the full faith and credit of the American government, surely, surely we can pass the John Robert Voting Rights Advancement Act and the Freedom to Vote Act to protect our democracy. I know people are tired and frustrated, and we can be tired and we can be frustrated, but what we can't do is give up. Just think what John Lewis, if he had given up those marchers 
marching across that bridge. If they had been bludgeoned on that bridge and didn't try to go back for turnaround Tuesday or ultimately to complete that march, they didn't give up. They didn't give out. Think of Rosa Parks on a bus. Had she not given up what our lives would have been, it was because of her courage, because of her sacrifice, that we now have integration in interpublic trans, uh, interstate transportation and commerce. So I say, let us remember the words of Coretta Scott King. She was profound and prophetic when she said, struggle is a never ending process. Freedom is never really won. You have to earn it and win it in each generation. So this is our mountain moment. Will we give up, give out, or will we keep pressing forward? We must keep pressing forward. I want to say in closing that it's never lost on me that I get to represent my home district, my hometown of Selma, Alabama. My job each and every day is not only to represent the people, the wonderful people of the Alabama 7th Congressional District today, but it's also to protect and further the legacy, the legacy of Selma, of Montgomery, of Birmingham. And I will not give up and I will not give out. It was King, Dr. Martin Luther King, who said, if you cannot run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But we must keep moving forward. Let's move forward together and demand that the Senate pass the Freedom to Vote Act and the John Robert Lewis Advancement Act. Let's do it and let's do it now.